I remember when L4 was an honorable kingdom. Long before the battle on Mount Shire, the king of L4, King Shaw, was already feeling disregarded by the kings of the north. He knew that King Wellick and King Ondan's days were numbered, but his own were far from over. A new generation was coming, and he would be the victim of circumstances beyond his control. The war between Lord Kazai and King Invar seemingly caused King Shaw to forget the peace this kingdom has been known for, pushing for a place in this war that we did not have the strength for. This kingdom was peaceful for a time. Ilifor wasn't just striving to be a great kingdom, it was a great kingdom. It was the perfect example of everything Obsidian and Onyx were trying to become. It wasn't as large as either of those territories, but that allowed it to become the prestigious place it was. I, like many others, wanted to be a part of that purpose greater than my own. I joined up so I could help those in need, and I knew that L4 was responsible for helping many towns around it. When I first became a knight, the kingdom of Ilfor worshipped a goddess who, since then, has gone missing. This kingdom was prosperous with her guidance, but almost out of nowhere, King Shaw felt as if her assistance wasn't needed and turned her back on her. This wasn't the first instance of King Shaw acting erratically. He became obsessed with negative ideas and thoughts. This brewing of the mind that there were problems breaking out all over the kingdom. His desire to solve these problems was at the root of each individual issue. He thought his people would prefer Obsidian and Onyx over Ilfor if they continued to prosper. He felt the goddess would expect more than piety in return. When he would address us, there was an uneasy feeling that he didn't trust us. Yet he spoke to us like we were the greatest army in the world. And many of us bought into his lie. Now I feel nothing but shame and despair. Almore was a peaceful town. They stood no chance against our well-trained army. We crushed them and enslaved them. Enslaving an entire city isn't exactly what I signed up for. The worst part of the whole situation is that once we left Elmore, we never went back. He left it abandoned and ruined. But I could never wash away the blood on my hands. Some of us couldn't figure out why he would just abandon an entire village that we could use as a stronghold if King Ingvar and Lord Gaza had decided to travel farther south. From a rulership standpoint, it seemed like a lapse in judgment. An act that would only serve to scar his own knights and tarnish his own name. How could the people who survived the assault on Elmore ever forgive us? I wonder every night if any of the citizens there escaped and didn't get shipped and enslaved to Sababia. I wonder if one night we'll pay one of us a visit and act revenge. Then there's the idea of burning bridges, quite literally in this case. I'm still not sure how we managed to subdue the woman they call Natalie, but if you've never heard of her, she's basically imbued with the power of the sun. If anyone is going to survive what is in store for the people of Elmore in Sabia, it's her. And if she finds her way back to our continent, she will surely stop at nothing to leave ill for in ashes. I'm not sure I still want to be here in ill for if that day ever comes. To be honest, I think a lot of the knights here are losing faith in King Shaw. Now that we no longer have the support of our goddess, I think the citizens of Ilfor are also losing faith. If 
King Shaw doesn't gain back the trust of his knights or his people soon, then it will be too easy for the winner of the battle in the north to take over. If he wants to be ready for them, then we need to get stronger. Not circle back, but taking over Elmore and actually using it would be a good start. <laughs> Now I sound ruthless as the king, but if we're talking about strategy, then taking over the entire south, well, King Engvar and Lord Kaze duke it out, would be the smarter approach. Unfortunately for King Shaw, that would include the Deadlands, and without the help of her goddess, there is no way we're making it past the bog, let alone deep enough to take control of it. The witch goddess Aradia rules there, and we would be no match for her. I don't care how well trained our army is. Then again, I wonder if King Shaw has already made a deal with Aradia. The sudden shift in personality from insightful ruler to monstrous tyrant would at least make some sense if that were the case. Though the rest of the gods seem to have vanished, so maybe the Deadlands are empty and we can just waltz right in there and take it. Despite my fear, that's for King Shaw to decide, I suppose and for me to wait for him and make that decision. I don't know if I'll find my way out of this mess. I make it take up arms like I did against Dalmor, only this time it would be against an Aradia. And much like everyone else that goes into the bog, I might not make it back home. Home. <laughs> it's funny to even think of Vilfor as my home anymore. The king, its people, and Everything around me has changed so much recently. If only King Shaw were to send us into the Deadlands to fight in Aradia. I do make it out alive. I am just as afraid of what I will find when I get back. <laughs>